Vegan Chefs, I'm Stefan and this channel is dedicated to making you a better vegan cook. Today we have a vegan Wellington recipe featuring butternut squash, crispy on the outside, delicious on the inside. I think we should jump into it, so I'll see you in the video. We're going to get started with the crepe. We're going to add the flour to our blender, three quarters cup cup and a quarter of plant milk, tablespoon of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of sea salt, three tablespoons extra virgin olive oil, three quarters teaspoon baking powder, pop the lid on, turn it on high, puree until smooth. That simple. The crepes pureed for roughly, I don't know, one minute. It's nice and smooth. You could rest the batter for 30 minutes. That's the minimum. The maximum is overnight, which is the best. It gives the gluten plenty of time to relax. Our crepe batter is rested and it is time to make some crepes. We have our griddle preheated to 250 degrees. We're gonna start by putting just the smallest amount of olive oil down. If we add too much, it makes the crepe batter actually slip around. Temperature is crucial. If the pan is too hot, the crepe cooks too quickly, and it browns without cooking the other side. Spread out the batter. Now we just have to be patient. There we go. Now we're going to gently peel it up. We're going to put it on our plate with parchment paper. Let's get the butternut started. First step, we're gonna peel the butternut squash. I like to trim the tip off. Let's trim the bottom. Then we're gonna take our peeler. We're basically just gonna peel the length of the butternut squash. The butternut squash is peeled. Essentially what we're gonna do next is we wanna keep the solid part of the butternut squash. This part has the seeds in it and it's hollow and what's gonna basically happen is we're roasting it, that will start to collapse and essentially overcook because we need to cook the entire squash. So we're gonna trim off the part that has the seeds. Perfect, so we have just a tiny bit there. Basically with this guy, you could do, put it in your stock, take the seeds out, dice it up, put it in the stock, or we can make a sauce out of it. We're gonna remove that little bit that's in there. Just scoop it out with the spoon. I did a better job on this one than the other one, because that's just a tiny bit, yeah. They're clean, they're ready to go. We have our sheet pan lined with parchment paper. Goes our salt, Dijon mustard. We have our two vinegars. I had them separate and then I combined them without thinking. And then we have our extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna use our, our little whisk. The oven is preheated, 425 degrees. Our first coating on. Okay, we have our first round of glazing into the oven, 425. We're gonna let it cook for 10 minutes. We're gonna pull it out, we're gonna glaze it again. We're basically gonna glaze every five to eight minutes just until the squash is tender when we insert a knife. You could see it starting to dehydrate a little bit, which is perfect. And about halfway, I'll actually rotate the entire butternut squash so we can get some on that bottom as well. All right, back in the oven. Another 10 minutes or so. The squash is looking so dark and earthy. We're gonna add a 
another little layer. It's actually been in for 45 minutes. We're gonna just pop this in the oven for five minutes to get this glaze to set up really nice. And then we're gonna allow the butternut squash to cool so that we could wrap it and move on to the next step. Now it's time to get started on our mushroom duke cell. Really simple, we have mushrooms, shallots, salt, a little bit of olive oil, a spoon, a pan, and it takes a few minutes to cook all that water out. So we're gonna start with chopping our shallot and mushrooms. We're gonna start with slicing our shallot. So the mushrooms. We're basically just gonna chop the mushrooms pretty fine. And you just, it's easier to just kind of do it in batches. We have a pound and a half of, cream, of uh, button mushrooms here. All right, the mushrooms are just about chopped. I really recommend a larger cutting board. <laughs> Tablespoon of olive oil, nothing major. We're gonna add our shallot. Saute the shallot for a minute or two. We're gonna season the shallot. It's time to add the mushrooms. Hit it with our salt again. We're gonna stir. Essentially, we're gonna cook on low until the mushrooms are dry. This is not a classic next uh, step, but it's something I really like. It adds a bunch of freshness to it. We're gonna add about a quarter cup of chopped chives. The time has arrived for us to roll our butternut squash wellington. I have the oven preheated 400 degrees with a sheet pan in the oven. We have our butternut squash. We have our beautiful crepes. We have our mushroom duxelle, flaky salt, and we have our puff pastry sheet. So I think it's time we get started. Let's do it. The first step in building our Wellington is we have a piece of plastic wrapped down. We're gonna place our crepes down. We're then gonna spread some mushroom duxelle down. squash on top. Grabbing the plastic, we're gonna start to roll the crepes around the butternut squash. Just peel it back a little bit. We're gonna fold the ends seal it. We're going to continue to roll and as we roll we're going to start to twist the ends. We don't want to go crazy with the, with uh, making it too tight but we want to definitely make it compact. We're going to pop that in the fridge for like 10 minutes so everything sets. We have another piece of plastic wrap. We have our thawed puff pastry. Place that right at the edge up using the plastic wrap. We're going to start to roll all of it together, pulling it tight. Until we get to the end, we're going to gently push down. We're going to gently continue to push in on the bottom and down to make sure we're sealing that bottom seam. off and we're going to pretend that we're wrapping a present. So we brought in the middle section, we're going to push down, we're going to fold the edge over, fold the other edge over, we're going to trim just a little bit of that end off, we're going to use a fork to push down and seal a piece of parchment paper cut 
just about the size of our Wellington. Our next step is we're gonna add a very thin layer of vegan egg wash. We want to try to coat as much as we can. We don't want such a thick layer that it's like dripping with it. Next, we're gonna do our little garnish work. Gently, with the knife, we're gonna go around at an angle. And then this side, you just gotta kind of match up those lines. We don't want to cut too much into the puff pastry, but just enough to score the outside. And then we're going to basically create a little diamond pattern. Our last step is giving a generous topping of flaky sea salt. Don't be shy with the salt. It's gonna add this just beautiful burst. It's gonna help make the dough crispy. And this flaky sea salt is absolutely delicious. This is gonna go in the oven. I have a sheet, baking sheet in the oven, preheated at 400 degrees. I am so pleased with how crispy the puff pastry is. I'm exceptionally happy with how cooked the puff pastry is on the inside. The butternut squash is still vibrant in color. It's cooked all the way through, but there's a little bit of texture to it in the middle. The mushrooms look amazing. So let's cut a portion. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mmm. All I can say is wow, <laughs> just wow. It all came together. The earthiness of the mushrooms, the sweetness of the butternut squash, there's still texture to the squash. So it's not just this uh, soft, mushy like thing. And then we have the beautiful richness of the glazing when we roasted it, the crispiness of the puff pastry, the little bit of creaminess from the crepes. It all worked. I am so happy. I can't tell you ex how excited I am about this. It's beautiful. It's delicious. You're going to make it for Thanksgiving. So let me know how it goes. And I'll see you next week. Bye.